Once upon a time, two friends joined forces to bring you the best in horror entertainment. Brian from the North, Tim from the South, each bringing their own unique perspective to the horror community. Movie reviews, Blu-ray releases, beer pairings, games, and more. Welcome to your new home for horror. This is Civil War. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode 268 of the Civil War podcast. I'm your host, Tim. And this is Brian. But I'm going to speak in, in the, the native tongue of this series, which nobody guessed. Even David McHugh didn't even try. He probably gave up because he won yeah. two already, but it's out. <laughs> anyway, it's The Howling, if you haven't guessed it. Uh, as Tim, well, I'll tell you, this, this one, this, it, it, like, this is a slog of a dismemberment in like, ways I unexpected because – even the, the Hellraiser, which is probably one of the the ones what we we that most people would say like oh that's a tough series to get through all of them because after the first like four, after the first one of the Howling, I think it just plummets. <laughs> it could, yeah, it really. I does. mean, you like two is at least watchable in some weird ways, but because it's like so weird that it's like it's entertaining and 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 I had seen this tons of times back in the day to to to, to get Tim's text reactions to watching. <laughs> oh, I've been like doing Dude. live commentary on these things as I'm watching them with our group. Text yeah, team because they were just so. Well, we'll yeah. get into it. But yeah, I mean, so it, it, and, and by far, like the first one, of course, is is a, is a true classic and one of my favorite, um, you know, movies, horror movies of all time. It's one that I like. One of the few, the early horror movies that I watched repeatedly because it was always on HBO. Probably for the reason. Uh, one of the reasons because it like you know it had that nude scene that like you know as a young growing Brian um, probably <laughs> liked to watch all the time because it was cool to see it on cable you know without anyone realizing, um, um, but uh, yeah so they, but this this will be a fun one to uh, to I think it'd be fun to talk about at least um, yeah and I I will say Howling definitely has to take the the cake for the weirdest subtitles for a movie now I mean like you know uh, the ta- like. Not the tagline, but like the yeah, the sub- subtitle. Well, what do you call that? Yeah, I guess it is a subtitle. Yeah, right. It is a subtitle. It's, well, they gotta think of a better word then. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, like, uh, but you'll well, you'll see what I get to when we we go through that. But anyway, um, we're gonna do a little bit just because we've been gone for so long, uh, mostly due to me. Uh, uh, we're gonna do a, a a little bit of a first chop, unofficial first chop for this one, just to kind of kind of catch you guys up with everything. Yeah, because it's been like this has been the worst like couple months for like being off of our schedule yeah unexpectedly yeah like, I mean, not, mostly because like... of me i mean of course everyone knows uh you know we we, we were, were very transparent uh you know of course i did the move uh cross country to california so this is our first uh we had our first uh overall episode that was uh transatlantic but this is our first official kind of episode that's transatlantic because uh we're recording in california so it actually w- works out interestingly though it's, it's good because um you know, time wise, it's with the three hour difference in my work schedule, it actually comes out to be okay. We can still kind of record the same time we always did for Tim, at least, without throwing it off. Like, there's no like late, more later nights for Tim or anything and everything. And um, it's just what happened is, you know, it was it was hard because the packing to get ready to like finalize cross country stuff is way harder than you think. Uh, between loading pods and and you know, and then just trying to c- close up where we were staying. And then the drive. Then of course we needed the week to drive cross country. Then we got here and we were exhausted and setting up, trying to get everything done. I mean, I still don't have everything, but you know, it's like, you know, when you live in a new state, you know, there's like car registrations you got to change, and you know, but change of address is bad enough. But then you, you know, then I gotta get. I still have to get like certain things, like new driver's license, and you know, and change the insurance things. I will say though, one of the tragedies, but like was resolved pretty quickly, was um. Somehow in there, I think because of the two address changes, my Fangoria issue twenty, the most the recent one from July, got lost somewhere. So I emailed them and I said, I don't know. Do you even show this being shipped? I don't know what happened. Uh, like the the guy was so nice. He wrote back and he's like, he's like, oh yeah, it's probably lost somewhere or someone else's in your old address is, is currently enjoying the great this great issue of Fangoria. <laughs> but he goes, don't worry. And he immediately sent me out a replacement. So oh, that's nice. and I've said this before, how good Fangoria's customer service is. I remember they're small, basically. In terms, they're not part of this yeah. giant conglomerate of, uh, you know, there's a lot of like, there's a, you know, a lot of people that work really hard to give us this, these issues. So uh, once again, I want to sing their praises because there's not even a, 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 a 
you know, a discussion. They were just so quick to, to solve my problem and, and ship me out an extra one. And, you know, they've done that in the past where one got damaged and they sent me out a new one. So praise again once to Fangoria, not only for their awesome content, but for their amazing customer service. So, But, yeah, and, uh, you know, and Tim also, uh, I guess, you know, Tim, poor Tim has been, like, like sh trying to struggle here because, you know, he's like, he, you know, I'm basically throwing his schedule off now. But, you know, with all this uh, – you know, like not not being able to record this week and not being able to record that week. But I think we somehow I think we're now back on a schedule where I think we'll be fine for a while now because we're back yeah. on. I mean, even with Tim's little bit, and you know, we'll go later in. I'll go into more details of like our trip and stuff. I don't want to you know bog that down on a on a summer vacation when we got a lot to do. But just uh, just to, you know, just wanted to give you the update. We're now you know settled here in California. Got got our schedule now, you know, a little bit. And Julie's got her work schedule. I have mine now, and everything's going good and and all that. So, but like I said, we'll we'll go into more of that. But uh, now Tim has a little bit of, of news that like kind of slowed his little schedule down. Oh yeah, because I got so yeah, I mentioned it on the dismember, but I got I got to end up getting a whole new computer, which of course had to get all my stuff off of the old. I didn't have all my Civil Gore files, all my music files, all the stuff I used for editing. I had none of that on the new computer, so I had to get all that set up. Um, I ended up having cousins come in from out of town a little unexpectedly. So that was, um, that was part of it. I had, this is a really bad month for birthdays. I have like, uh, Olivia's birthday, Anna's birthday, my best friend's birthday, my brother's birthday on like a two or three week time span. So, uh, I like every time Brian got into a place where he was settled i was unsettled yeah <laughs> so, we, so we finally we finally got things settled down i think i think it's actually though i'm like we were saying on the last episode it was such a break from the podcast even though we were both going through you know different very levels of stress it was such a break from the podcast that i'm like really rejuvenated and excited about doing the podcast again because it's been yeah. so long since we've been able to get into like our normal groove of things and now i got a really nice computer to handle all this stuff so uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the second half of the year and, and, you know, getting back on a regular schedule, getting some more interviews, get some more surprises, the, the horror challenge coming up. I mean, all this stuff's going to be fantastic. So. Yeah. And going into haunt season, it'll be fun because I'll have a lot more, a whole, whole new kind of a haunt season to explore yeah. out in California, a total different coast. And yeah, I'm going to try, I definitely, my goal is to hit one of the two. If not both, and that's you know Halloween Horror Nights and, and Hollywood and or Not Scary Farm. I think if I had a choice, honestly, this year it would be Not Scary Farm because the anniversary year. And from what I hear, everybody tells me that that is something you have to witness. It's that good. So it yeah, like plus you've seen you've that. seen I mean you've seen Halloween Horror Nights, uh, right? Although that's always a fun time, but you've right. seen it, so th it would yeah I would definitely pick Knots if I was in your yeah. position and as well. There is going to be certain things like I know that are <clears throat> that I could visit, but I, the, some of the ones I think I want to save for when Tim's eventual visit comes out. Like I know yeah. I could go visit the you know in Pasadena I can visit the Michael Myers house. I'm, that's something I'm purposely Tim I'm going to tell you I'm saving for when you come out and we try to drive down there. Yeah, because I want you to experience that. So. But uh, oh, but yeah, it'll amazing. just be cool because we'll get to see some of the, some of the pod friends we know throughout there, um, you know, like and, and you know I'll just have a whole new bunch of experiences that we can share with the podcast. So it's kind of it's kind of exciting. So it's a lot like Tim said. It's a, it's like there's this invigoration now that uh, that we have that like we're we're back and we're you know we did get a, a break from the podcast, but it's like I feel like like especially when I felt it in the dismemberment where we were like it's like after about two seconds in there we were like full blast like going yes. up it was just really came out really good um and also i am drinking my first pumpkin beer of the season oh which is first week of august i think it's the earliest i've ever started but uh they had the elysian pumpkin packs which which was really hard to find for me last year like one place i knew carried it this year man i went to the same place and they had like a whole like i sent the group chat a picture like a whole display like tons of them yeah. so i was really happy to see that the lead like it seems this year like pumpkin spice is going nuts like yeah you know, you have, like, earlier off than ever right yeah like you have these off years and like they're like i remember one year like i couldn't find pumpkin spice anything and i was like in september i couldn't find anything yeah. and, like this year i'm already getting like pumpkin spice cereals pumpkin spice coffee pods i've already got my beer oh did I mean, you it, try gourmetso did you get them from gourmetso that place no i haven't tried them yet but oh, i've okay. got them i've got them I've got them like on the on the list. Yeah. Uh, that that place looks amazing. So, um, but yeah, we're we're yeah we're I, I'm like I'm hitting pumpkin spices in like full 
blast this yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. I think I like I've seen some stuff. I just haven't got it yet. Just I'm trying to get settled before I start like like bringing more things into the <laughs> you know because yeah. definitely where we're staying now. I'm not gonna like the monolith will not be set up anytime soon if at all here. Uh, but uh, I I mean I I can tell you it's not gonna be here. I mean it will have Blu-rays and stuff here, but. Definitely not going to be the monolith will not be set up here. But <laughs> so I'm going to be trying to get stuff in like that. But I, and then I realized you just mentioned it, it didn't even hit me. It's like all these new breweries that I'm going to see out here that are going to have their pumpkin beers. So oh I'll have my a whole gosh, new bunch yes. of pumpkin beers yeah. to like to try. And you know, maybe we'll, somehow we'll have to get some to each other. Like I'll have to send get you some sent to you. Yeah, yeah. From like the you West got a whole Coast. new whole new world. Yeah, just like the Aladdin song. Um, yes. but anyway, yeah, Tim, but Tim and I are not going to recreate it and be singing on a magic carpet for you or any anytime soon. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> uh, all right, well, let's get into it. This is the Howling, and we were covering four films in this episode because we tried to our best to keep these uh, series to two weeks, and there are eight films in the Howling franchise. Uh, so this was going to definitely be our biggest uh, and, and, and as of now, I'd like to say probably seven too many, but uh, yes, <laughs> we'll, probably. We'll see. Yeah. we'll see. Maybe there's maybe there's a gem in five through eight. I don't know. <laughs> uh, all right. So first up, we have The Howling from 1981, okay. directed by Joe Dante, who I'm a big fan of. Yes. Uh, this you know, this was this is a like as you see with some of these franchises, like the first one is like, oh, I recognize everybody in here, and it's got a yeah. great director, and that's why it's the best. Uh, it's got D. Wallace plays Karen White, Patrick McNee plays Dr. George Wagner, Dennis Dugan as Chris, Christopher Stone as R. William Bill Neal, <laughs> Belina Belaski as Terry Fisher, Kevin McCarthy as Fred Francis, John Carradine as Earl Kitten. It's basically Slim- got and it's basically got like the Joe Dante like team in here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Slim Pickens as Sam Newfield, Elizabeth Brooks as Marsha, Robert Picardo as Eddie, Margie Impert as Donna, Noble Willingham as Charlie Barton, James Murtaugh as Jerry Warren, and the great Dick Miller as Walter Paisley. By the way, you know um, Noble Willingham, right? You know what he's from, right? I, I'm not off the top of my head. One of the movies that you you, you pulled into the uh, a, a, a recent Slate case from last year that made no sense, and that was he's the one guy the 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 head guy from uh, City Slickers that ran like the dude ran. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> that old guy. Nice. Oh, that's, that's so great. yeah, I remember he could make Clay Stone. I think that was his name. Yeah. Remember when he appeared even in the sequel at the end? Yeah. When he did the, yeah. So that that was Noble Winningham. So oh, I, when, when I saw him, I'm like, it. oh, I wonder if Tim's gonna notice that that's him. I didn't and even get all anything. excited and try and bring City Slickers yet again into this <laughs> occasion. <laughs> um, we have the synopsis here: After a bizarre and near deadly encounter with a serial killer, a television newswoman is sent to a remote mountain resort whose residents may not be what they seem. I'll tell you, right. I, I had I thought I had seen the Howling, and I was getting it mixed up with the Woofen, yeah, which is another werewolf movie that came out the same year, along with American Werewolf in London, also came out in eighty one. Yeah, Tim, Tim, we should movies. we should mention Tim does get D Wallace and and Albert Finney confused all the time. I do. I so do. it's That's not the funny. first time this happened. I mean, he <laughs> I, I always thought it was odd when he thought he played you know the uh, Elliot's mom in ET, Albert Finney, but you know. It happens, you know. People it get happens. confused. I mean, you watch as many movies as I do. It's yeah, easy to get it's, it's, it's easy to. No, a Wolfen is another great one. Which we, I don't know why, why we have not done that one yet. That was another yeah, one I used to that, watch all the well, time. See, and I had read the book. I read the novel of of Wolfen by Whitley Strieber, and I read that like I, I don't know if if I read that before. The, I probably read it after the movie. But um, but I yeah. I, so I was convinced in my mind that I watched The Howling. I'd never seen this movie. Oh, like I was shocked. I was like, oh my god, I've never seen this movie. And it's so opposite for me because I literally um, watch this like all the time because it was on the movie channel when I was a kid. When I like back in those times when I first had the cable, and it was like that Friday the Thirteenth. I would always watch on there, and it was like a, wait, like I mean, I, like it was on all the time, and I watched it every, almost every time it was on, probably for the wrong reasons because it was nudity, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was so bad. Like I even looked on Letterboxd because I was like, I there, I had even marked it as as seen on Letterboxd. That's how convinced I was. I had oh seen this. And I, Tim and I started watch. I know, and I started watching this. I'm like, I've never like I don't I don't remember any of this. I don't remember D. Wallace in this. I don't remember any of this. So I'm convinced. Like if I did see it, it was have been so long ago, and I was not paying a bit of attention and didn't remember a single scene. That's the only way I can describe it. Um, but. The one thing I really liked about this movie is now this one does not follow the novel as closely as Howling Four does, as we'll find out. But um, God they changed that novel. Oh my God! I know. Well, they changed a lot of it. I got a funny story about that, by the way. So I was reading the trivia for some of these, and apparently Joe Dante was doing a uh, talk at some place and was talking about how he really didn't like the 
book uh, that this movie was based on. And this guy uh, raised his hand and said, so you didn't really like the book, right? And Joe Dante was like, no, I didn't like the book. And the guy goes, well, I wrote the book. And it was the author of that- The Howling. So I don't know what came of that, uh, that awkward exchange, but um, Joe Dante famously did not like the book that this was based on. I have another funny Joe Dante howl- uh, howling thing for later, but it's when we get into howling too. I'll tell you about. Oh, okay. Um, but so yeah, you know, he famously didn't like. So they they did make quite a few changes to the screenplay. But I really liked the fact that this was not set up like I would expect a traditional werewolf movie. Like I was actually I was thinking of this while I was watching. It. I was like, you know what? Even if there were no werewolves in this movie, I'd actually be kind of interested in this plotline. Like, it was really you, good. Yeah, like you have this uh, reporter that she's, uh, or newswoman, I should say, that is basically put into a very precarious sting operation against a serial killer. Uh, and it ends up being very traumatized from it. But the whole, like that whole opening first act, like I was really invested in D. Wallace's character and the whole serial killer angle and the whole like gritty crime drama thing that was going on like forget about the werewolves like i was actually like i, I would have watched this movie and probably been really entertained even without any werewolves in it. yeah because if you didn't know what this movie was and you started watching it you'd have no idea one from that whole opening segment that it was a werewolf movie or even remotely a werewolf movie and two you would like tim said you would be super invested in it and i think it's because it's just the way that the opening is it's so it's so good and gritty and d wallace does such a good job in there that it like you're in no matter what it is at that point you're pulled right into that movie yeah i thought i thought they did a fantastic job of of making this werewolves i don't want to say werewolves are secondary to but but they made a good movie without the werewolves right first and, and then they added the werewolves on top see, so it's even that, better you know, how many times have we seen that the other way around and it fails miserably yeah so like and this is back in like the 80s and joe, joe, joe dante we don't need to you know to sing the praises of because i mean we've already done that and everyone knows how good of a director he is and we, like you know I, I it's hard pressed for me to find a joe dante film i didn't like um right. I, I don't think there is in fact I don't know if there is one and he's he's just such a good it's such a, something about his his directing style just appeals to me I think maybe Well that's even what, have you seen even his interviews he just comes across as like such a nice yeah. like he's he's very like I love watching interviews with Joe Dante because yeah. he just he just has this great mannerism Yeah and he's like he's just like kind of like I like watching when Scorsese does an interview it's kind of like that Yeah But uh yeah. did I even did I even tell you my uh Joe Dante poster story. Cone was there with this no. one. So Kevin McCarthy was at a chiller convention. I was all excited to get a poster signed or something signed from him. And Cone happened to notice that one of the things he was selling was a poster that was already signed by Joe Dante. So Ooh. he's like, oh, you should get that because look, that, that already has his signature. Then you get two for one. So I'm like, oh, good idea. So I get this thing, and Kevin McCarthy, I felt so bad. He was really old at that time, and he was starting to lose it. He literally signed his name almost over Joe Dante. So he, he looks like a big smurge of two oh, names. No. I can't even tell what it is. <laughs> but oh, no. uh, it, nevertheless, I still have the poster and a great story, and I love Kevin McCarthy anyway, so I would never, like, begrudge him for anything. You know, like, you guy's a guy's a legend. So it was, it just we chalk it up to, like, kind of a comical story. And I know what was there, so I don't care if people can see it or not. I know what was there on the story. But oh. um, anyway, yeah, no, but Joe, that's why Joe Dante is it's just one of my favorite directors. I think you're right. It's like he just seems like a cool dude to begin with, you know, when he does anything, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I, I like I was totally into this movie uh, from the very beginning, and of course, D. Wallace is fantastic in it. Yeah, I mean, what, um, what, what that? I swear to God, what would this world be without D. Wallace? I swear, uh, like the movies that she's she's, she's in, you know? Yeah, and, uh, and there's and, and what really impressed me was I've always thought all along that American Werewolf in London like set the stage for werewolf effects, like in transformation effects, and. I never knew there was anything even close to it, but then I didn't realize until after this movie, like I'm watching this, I'm like, these effects are pretty darn good. Like why is, why don't I hear about this more often when they talk about the transformation scenes? And then I was reading after, after, I mean, as I was doing research for the, for the episode where there is like a contingent of fans that argue that the howling is really yeah. set set the because it came out before American Werewolf in London. You know what? You know what? I think I think the the uh, and not to knock the Howling uh, effects in any way. I think 
what was so impressive about um, the American Werewolf in London is there were so many, like, not, like, it was more seamless, the, the thing, like, with the effects. Like, there was a couple of cutaway and editing tricks in The Howling, I think, true. that they used. True, that is true, yeah. To kind of cut and, and kind of, like, there, it's like, it was, like, almost, like, lot. I mean, as much as live you can get for Werewolf Trick. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it was, like, you saw the entire process, like, boom, 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 boom. There wasn't a cutaway to then come back to something else. To like a, an advancement of the the transformation, and I mean, then there was that one where there was a little bit of animation kind of a thing. So I think just overall, yeah. it was all so such done, you know, so many practical, uh, you know, right out in the open effects that weren't trying to be hid or cut through editing but, uh, in yeah, American Werewolf and- in London. And like not all the effects are great. Like like the the transformation sequence in the Howling is great, but there are some that are a little weird. Like to, to me, the kind of the the female werewolf at the end kind of thing just it's kind of cheesy to me but um but still i i was i was not expecting it like i was yeah. not expecting the effects to be as good as they were like i was really kind of surprised by that so that was like a really pleasant surprise and you know rick baker of course is such a legend i think that's also adds to why american werewolf in london uh, gets kind of more of a looks back more fondly because because it was like rick baker uh, yeah. Whereas this one was, uh, I was looking at special effects: Doug Beswick, Roger George. But um, I mean, we're I mean, not knocking them by any. Not means. no, not by yeah. God, by not by not yeah. by any means. But they're not as big a household names as Rick Baker was. So. No. Yeah, I mean, you figure they should be more known though, based off yeah. of this. So. But um, but at that, again, like that's why I was saying, I was I was very uh, surprised that um, and I think Rick Baker. I think I read that Rick Baker was supposed to do the effects of this one. But ended up doing an American Werewolf. But um, I, yeah. Basically, this still, time, this early '80s was good, good werewolf time. A lot of werewolf movies, yeah, yeah. And, and even beyond '81. I mean, this this, this kind of kicked it off. But there was like werewolf yeah. movies, like because you had Silver Bullet. Um, you had a bunch of great werewolf movies throughout the '80s. Like it, it lasted, like the whole werewolf trend lasted for a good long several years. Yeah. But, um, but you know, yeah. you know what I think I like though. Like, the, I, it's funny because this is like a Joe, John, Joe Dante signature too. It's like with with having the Dick Miller in it. Like his sequences in there were like the so perfectly placed that like that like crazed like disgrunt. Like, has he ever not been disgruntled as a, as a, as, a, as a some kind of like like retail employee? Like, look at every time he's like somebody like he was like in the shopping mall where he was like the, 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 the cleaning guy. He was all upset and he's like a, annoyed, like in, in Twilight Zone, in the Joe Dante segment in Twilight Zone, the movie. And in Gremlins, he's kind of always <laughs> angry, <laughs> frustrated. <laughs> the poor guy doesn't get a break. No. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, and, and like his sequences are so, so great in this too because of how he's like, um, yeah, you know, just how he's like this, like the, the crazed shop owner guy, though, and like that. But he's like so honest, and like the, the guy's like, "You really believe in this stuff?" He goes, "Hey, I'm trying to sell, I'm trying to sell books here." You know, it's like just the, the Dick Miller, like himself, is like his own thing. You know. <laughs> and I was reading, I think I read another thing where they, uh, Dick Miller said this was his favorite role. Oh, I don't, bl- I can't, I can't see why not. I mean, he's so. I mean, I'm surprised. Actually, I, I take that back. I'm surprised it wasn't Mr. Futterman, but like this one should definitely be next because he's so good. Yeah, he, yeah, he's just fantastic. At- Oh, actually, um, I was wrong. Rick Baker was involved in this one. He was. Yeah, a he did. I, I, you know, part of me thinks he like did something. But I don't think. I don't know if he did all of it though, right? No, no, he was, no, no, he no. A, he, no, he was a consultant on this one, right? So, so you can see where it, I could definitely show you why there's effects that are very reminiscent of American Werewolf in London, uh, which yeah. came out several months later. Because I was just reading through the. I missed him because I was looking at their special effects, but he's actually listed under makeup department as a special makeup effects consultant. Right. Yeah. They probably asked him. They said, "Hey," and he's probably like, "Damn, you know, I guess I gave some good consultant work. Let me do this myself for the next yeah, let one. Let me do this myself and like become a freaking legend." Yeah, and I, I will but, own the world of werewolf transformation. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, Howling was fantastic. I loved yeah. it. I loved. Uh, I loved the whole. Like, it, it doesn't feel like a werewolf movie until it is. Yeah, and, uh, and then when it's a werewolf movie, like the effects are great. I mean, there's there's nothing not to like about this movie. I really no, it really is. This this one is one of my favorites of all time. Uh, just horror movies in general, not just even werewolf movies. Just just horror movies in general. I've always like loved it. There's just something about it. It's like one of my comfort horror films in a weird way. It's like I just something about it. every time I watch it, I like I get this like this like uh, it's I, the I D Wallace back. effect. It's a D. It, Wallace it, it could be the it, motherly it, thing, yeah. Yeah, and she's yeah. no mother. It's not motherly in this at no, all. No, not in this in at fact, all. In fact, she's no. like young, like like you know, like non motherly D. Wallace in this. Uh, yeah, but um, and you know, it's like 
you know, like one of the one of the things I always remember is like we always like all my friend any of my friends that had seen it the the role, one scene they always talked about was a Robert Picardo where he goes let me give you a piece of my mind and he literally digs into his yeah. skull <laughs> and pulls out a little piece of his brain. I mean, like that's that's awesome, you know. Like especially think about a young like budding horror fan like myself at that, that you know when I was like literally like ten years old watching that how cool that was, you know. So that brings us to the Howling. Two, mm. your sister is a werewolf, originally titled Sturbo Werewolf Bitch, until the MPAA said you can't have bitch in a movie title. Since <laughs> when? <laughs> Since 1985, I guess. Mm. Uh, so this one is uh, directed by Philippe Mora. Uh, this one, again, came out in 1985, starring Christopher Lee, of all people, as Stefan. Uh, I read the trivia that he only did this movie because he'd never been in a werewolf movie. Yeah, so and, and did you see what he did? Um, a funny – remember I, was, I teased this in the first thing. Uh, one of the funniest things he did was when he got the role in Gremlins 2 to work for Joe Dante, the first thing he did was apologize for being in Howling 2. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so he's got a very, very fun history with this film. And he, I mean he looks fairly embarrassed throughout this whole thing. But uh, yeah, but, but yet it, in typical Christopher Lee fashion, he kills it. He does. In he every does. way. Of course. Like, he's never going to not bring it. Uh, he, he gave way too much that he should have for this movie. Yeah, uh, Annie McIndro as Jenny, Reb Brown as Ben, Marsha A. Hunt as Mariana, Sybil Danning as Sturba, and Judd Oman as Vlad. A man discovers that his sister was a werewolf and helps an investigator track down a gang of the monsters through the United States and Eastern Europe. Now, this is a true sequel in that uh, Dee Wallace's character from the first film has a brother, we find out, and mm. he, when he realizes that she was a werewolf, that he gets sent on this quest to track down the head werewolf, queen of the werewolves, Sturba, to uh, kill her and eradicate werewolves once and for all. And uh, D. Wallace, D. Wallace was smart enough not to reprise this role. No, <laughs> no her um, the very brief sequence where they show her is played by a different actress. Yeah, um, well, she's all wolfed. So, yeah, so um, it, it's... Um, like, wolf yeah. out, do what you do, you know, like from the <laughs> Teen Wolf. Thing. It's like the director Teen, said that. Teen like Wolf the, was the other movie I was trying to think of that came out in the 80s that was part of this whole werewolf craze, yeah. of course. That True. Being a comedy. Teen but, Wolf uh, would have been a better sequel, though, to The Howling. Than yeah, this. definitely. Um, so this one... I tell you, this movie, I don't even know where to begin. There's, it's probably going to be a little R-rated discussion because for some yeah. reason, they really uh, really go all in on the werewolf sex stuff. Yeah, and they I, decided to just give you a hour and a half werewolf orgy most of the time. Pretty much. It, there's werewolf threesomes. There yeah. is uh, uh, gratuitous boob shots. Um, and one that's one of the most gratuitous boob shots I've ever seen in any movie to date in yeah. which uh, they took the the one brief boob shot of the actress who did not want to even appear nude in this movie and right. decided to play it over the end credits no less than 17 times. Yeah, it was Sybil Danning. She, yeah, I read that story too. She basically said like she was tired because she was she'd done a lot of movies and she was constantly one of these actresses that they always had, had nude. And she had no problem with it, but I think she just got tired of it. Yeah. But yet, so... They agreed to one nude scene in this, and boy, did they get their mileage off the one scene because there's literally – it's almost like one of those editing projects you do back in like high school when you're learning edit and you just repeat the same thing over and over again because yeah. there's like sequences in the in credits where it's just her removing her top like multiple times. With various reactions of from cut from other scenes in the movie. Yeah. Like, like it's they're reacting so, to her boob shot. It's so yeah, cringy. It's probably one of the most bizarre end credits I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, this movie is – the, the thing about this movie is it's hilariously campy, but it does not try to be. It, they're playing it seriously, yeah. and they're unintentionally just uh, ridiculous levels of camp here. Uh, there's a theme song that they're very proud of that they use throughout oh, this God. movie, uh, yeah. which you will hear 50 million times, Howling. That, I, I, don't know, I don't know why this guy pronounces it that way, but all I heard throughout this whole movie is Howling. Was um, it was it Christopher Lee? Maybe <laughs> I don't know. That's not like he would say it. The uh, they do use the they do use your sister as a werewolf line at least twice in this movie because I'm always aware yeah, of this, when they repeat the movie title in the movie. Title. Yeah, this this movie is is like thirty different DiCaprio points you could use probably in this. Yeah, uh, it's it's pretty ridiculous. Um, so uh, I was watching this and I was kind of tweeting, uh, not tweeting along. I was uh, group texting the group as I'm watching this because I could not actually comprehend what i was seeing i mean there's a lot of i mean i think for when they try to do like a a female werewolf it always looks just really cheesy to me and uh i mean not not that i have anything against female werewolves 
but they try to <laughs> it's like they try to it's like when disney movies when they try to make like an animal female and they like exaggerate their eyelashes and everything like to make <laughs> like you see yeah a, like you can't tell a girl dog and a boy dog you know apart from each other but besides the obvious you know just at a glance yeah but it's like they try to overdo it to make it look more feminine, and they do, and they seem to do that same thing with werewolves, and it just cracks me up every time. But uh, uh, this movie just between the werewolf sex scenes and the horrible, horrendous dialogue uh, yeah. throughout this, the uh, the stupid theme song, uh, it's 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 something to see. You have to see it to believe it. And Christopher Lee is fantastic in it, of course, because yeah. he's always a professional. But he's playing against these people that cannot act. Yeah. Uh, he's a movie that's well beneath his stature. I mean, there's one point in this movie where they got shipped the wrong costumes for the werewolves and they got shipped uh, gorilla suits from Planet of the Apes. And so oh, no. they, they literally had scenes where these wolves are running, or supposedly werewolves are running around and they look like gorillas. Like it's, it's hard yeah, to describe. The, between that and the, the, the loose lore that they have in this, in this, this sequel it's just yeah this thing this it's funny and i used to this used to be also on a lot um on cable back in the day i don't did not like watch this religiously like i did with the original by any means i think i've seen it a couple of times when it used to appear on there um but yeah it was like i it, it's like it almost doesn't deserve the the even though it's the direct sequel it doesn't deserve that like distinction no, it's well, just it takes away everything good about the first one and like yeah. tries to tries to like you know what it is it's like you take grade d meat but get the <laughs> best chef ever to season it perfectly yeah. and that's the christopher lee is that seasoning yes that's but a great other analogy. than that <laughs> well you're still still deep down it like it fools you for a little bit but then you just realize you're still eating garbage meat. you're eating dumb food well yeah. i mean i will say this was I entertained? Yes, I was entertained. Like, like there was a point in the movie where it got so ridiculous that I went from hating it to kind of liking it because it was so dumb. It was one of those movies that I could see, like, if you were sitting around having drinks with your friends, like on uh, Halloween night or something, like I, this, I could see, like, would be hysterical to watch yeah. with a group. Joe of people. Bob would make a fun night of it. Oh I'm yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, it's not like it's a boring movie. It's not bad no. in that sense. It's a very entertaining movie because it is so ridiculous. Yeah. So in that don't, case, don't worry, they get to boring howling movies soon enough. Yeah, that's why I made that distinction because yeah. we're going there. But uh, I mean, I, I'll have to say I was not bored, and, and Christopher Lee in anything I watched because he's amazing. So it's really fun yeah. to see him in a movie so far below his level and see him like try to make yeah. the best of it. Um, the werewolf sex stuff is really weird. I mean, there's like elderly people standing around in like dominatrix costumes and stuff. I, it was very, very strange. Oh, and it does have uh, what's his name from uh, Pee Wee's big adventure in this. It does. So bringing back to the Pee Wee. Yeah, yeah. It has Judd Omen, you know, Judd he Omen, was like, yes. you know, the, the, uh, the Mickey, uh, you know, the, I'm a loner Pee Wee, a rebel. <laughs> yeah. That like, so, that guy, uh, right? Is that what he said? I'm alone, right? That was his yeah, line. Yeah. You don't want to get mixed that, up with a guy like me. Yeah, that Pee Wee, like later on. Yeah. Uh, he he was in repeated. prison for uh, cutting a mattress tag off. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was it was it was it was definitely an interesting uh, uh, piece of work. Yes. Uh, but yeah, that's. That that said, uh, you know, if you're gonna watch this franchise, I mean, you know, don't I, I wouldn't skip it. You know, don't skip it, but. Um, but you might be able to skip some of these coming up. Uh, I don't know. The net, I, I mean, that's really all we could say. I mean, what more are we going to say about Howling yeah, 2? I, I don't know what else um, to say about it. It's just, you got to see I mean, it. Now, now we'll move on to Howling 3, which I literally I, – I don't even know what this – this movie just is like – it's almost like – like this, like I felt like they just like cut scenes together from random movies, and it's PG thirteen by the way. It drops down in rating right off the bat, so you're not getting the werewolf orgy you got from the second one. I don't know if that was an attempt to redeem this trilogy or not, but they moved it where it became. It basically was started off as a, I guess a werewolf movie, but then turned into like Sheena type or Crocodile Dundee <laughs> type of thing. It, you know, well, like one of those type of movies where it's like, oh, the crazy American adjusts to the outback over there, you know, kind of thing. And like, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, oh, my God, this is literally it's it, it mimics Sheena in a lot of ways. That movie. Yeah. It's and like Sheena the, was a good movie. But they 
well, Philippe, Philippe Mora or Philippe or Philippe Mora, who did Howling 2, did Howling 3 as well. But it's yeah. almost like they figured out that Howling, Howling 2 was campy, even though they didn't mean for it to be. So they set out to make Howling 3 intentionally campy. Like it's, I would, yeah. I would argue Howling 3 is almost a horror comedy. Not from a joke standpoint. Yeah, point, it's listed se. as that. I think actually, I yeah. think it's listed. But it's, it's not like not like in terms of like having jokes and gags as much as just the tone is very comedic. I mean, you could tell like there's a director uh, in this movie, uh, a, a guy playing a director that's very an Alf- very much obviously an Alfred Hitchcock. Oh my parody. god, total Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, and they and he's like even like they did give him the last thing of the movie too. But uh. Actually, before we get too fur- much further in there, we probably should do the uh, the, the housekeeping oh, yeah. yes, there with, the, the, housekeeping. with the cast. Uh, this one came out in 1987, so two years later. Again, same director, starring Barry Otto as Professor Harry Beckmeyer, which you'll hear and 50 times. And if you times. didn't hear that name, don't worry. Yeah, no, you'll, you'll hear, hear it about 78 <laughs> times throughout this movie to where you can give it a drinking game. Uh, Max Fairchild as Thilo, Imogen Ansley as Jerboa, Dagmar Blahova as Olga Gorky, Lee Bylos <laughs> as Donnie Martin, Ralph Cutterell as... Professor Sharp, Frank Thring as Jack Citron, Michael Pate or Pate, Michael Pate as president, um, a female werewolf, and I, and I didn't realize that guy was supposedly the president of the United States. Jeez, I guess I right. Is I, that what they were trying I to imply guess. he was? I didn't even realize that either. He just, I just thought he was the businessman. The way he's like, just like casually walking around, <laughs> no Secret Service, like, hey, Breckmeyer, what's up? I'm um, like, that's the president of the United States. I mean, uh, I, I mean, they called him president. I assume that's what he was. Yeah, I mean that's how I mean that's how he's like. It's not like he's listed as like president of the corporation or something. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, what corporation? I, yeah, there's no like. It's very very odd in the, this movie. I, I mean, and the funny thing is, it turns into like this. I dare I say, like, at towards the last half, like a family like adventure movie. I don't. <laughs> Well, let's let's back up and tell you the synopsis here. Yeah. A female werewolf runs away from her family and falls in love with a man who works in the movie business, while a sociologist who studies these creatures is looking for proof of their existence. So you have these two parallel plot lines where this yeah. gr- this female werewolf runs away. And, and when we say werewolf, like these things are like marsupials. They're Australian werewolves, so they have pouches and stuff. Yeah. It's very like bizarre. They're... Which is was Tim's hint. If you didn't, if by now, if you're yeah. listening to this, and you didn't get his hint for the. It was an excellent hint. Yeah. Uh, for for our our tease. Um, but um, and and at the same time, you got the sociologist who's they they've uncovered this film of a of a werewolf getting tortured, and so they're convinced that these things are real. So they're trying to track them down and, and find proof of their existence. And it's very exploitation. It's very like Australian stereotype stuff. And uh, there's some weird, like. The effects are kind of disgusting, like with the pouches and stuff. And there's like a, yeah. she has like a baby and the baby's like this, like obvious puppet. And it looks like something out of like, um, uh, what is that old like kid show? Like Land of the Lost. I mean, it looks like, it looks yeah. like that. Like, it looks really It's cheesy. very tiny also. Yeah. It, it's very Like I weird. expect, didn't you expect it like, like a baby size baby coming out at least if it was going to be. <laughs> It just it it reminded me of like a kid like you said like a kids movie like a um like it, it very much was reminiscent of like an eighties kids movie that would have like yeah. puppets and stuff in it like that's that's where it, it kind of the t- tonally it it was it was very very strange like it was yeah I have to say I've never seen a franchise like go so tonally different for the first three films like this like like so drastically, drastically. different you get like you get like a like a really good like plot driven like werewolf movie. Then you get a werewolf orgy film <laughs> that borderline like, softcore porn, and yeah. now you get like you this get family like friendly. a family film like Baby the Lost Legend. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, don't, I love yeah. Baby the Lost Legend though. Me too. That I mean, it, but that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like, but like again, we're ranking this as a howling film. Yeah. So we have to sh- do it with that critical eye. I mean, as a movie, it like if I think if it was just like we stumbled upon it on its own, it may have just been like we've been oh, that was okay. You know, but but now where it it takes its place in this franchise, it's very like misplaced. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a very weird movie. Um, it's I will give it this uh, again. Somehow it manages to not be boring. Uh, it, right. It's it. I mean, it starts off with a bang. Like you see werewolves from the very get go. Uh, yeah. It has some like 
ridiculous, ridiculous effects that kind of make it entertaining to watch. Like, and what's funny is they're making a movie within the movie, uh, or they're right. watching a movie within a movie at one point, and the. Eff- I think they're doing both in all honesty. They're, doing they're both. making one, they're watching one. They're and the <laughs> special effects in the There's movie. There's a ballet. I mean, you know. The like, special effects in the movie within the movie are like intentionally really bad. Like you could tell like they were trying to make it look like effects inside of a movie uh, versus the real effects for the actual quote unquote real werewolves. It was very bizarre. And it was it was kind of interesting to watch though to see them trying to like dumb down the effects for the movies within the movie. Uh, but it's um oh and I forgot one thing about uh well I'll, I'll get to it later uh, it, it's it has to do with Howling Four so I'll get oh, to that okay. in a minute but I, yeah it, it's it's such a strange strange movie and and I think the only thing that kind of saves it a little bit is that you can tell that the tone was intentional and right. if, this, if they had played this completely straight like they did Howling Two I would have I would have said oh my God this is like Somehow they managed to, to somehow make a step below Howling 2, if that's even possible. Yeah. But the fact that they went through it intentionally kind of gives it a little bit of saving grace in my book. Still not a good movie by any stretch no. of the imagination. But I, I will give it that. At least they understood where they went wrong with Howling 2 and kind of leaned into it. I, I, thought, I think they should yeah. probably just leaned away from it entirely, but they leaned right, into like- it. I, I, in all honesty, I'm surprised they hired this guy back for another Howling movie. But <laughs> yes, uh, unless yeah. he signed a two picture deal like right off the bat, and they're like, "Ah, oh, crap, we got to give this guy another Howling movie. <laughs> just give him this one. <laughs> he can't mess this one up." So should we just move on to Howling Four? I mean, why not? Gotta, yeah, I mean, really, this. there's not a lot to say about yeah. after the first one. You got to just keep moving. Yeah, on you got to keep moving. You can't dwell on them. And especially this one. Speaking of something that doesn't move along at oh all. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I swear, I thought this movie was three and a half hours long, and I still had twenty minutes left. Um, I was convinced my I was watching it backwards in uh, yeah. all honesty because it was, <laughs> it was like you literally are an hour you think you're an hour into this and it's like 18 minutes have passed and yes. I'm like what happened did it stop counting so is there a glitch in the the, the programming of this this streaming this you was know? an so, obvious attempt to reboot things uh, reset things because it's called Howling for the original nightmare 1988 comes out a year later directed by John Howell and Clive Turner and you could tell that they went they wanted to reboot the franchise because this is based on the novel again, just like the original Howling, but very much closer to the book that Joe Dante hated. Uh, so, uh, I wonder why I've, I, now I know it why explains he hated. everything Joe Dante did. Yes. Literally. It this, does. It does. It just, this gives Joe Dante every single, <laughs> like it gives him like, I even give him more praise. I, I want know. to like heap more praise on him for standing up and saying how much he hated the first book yes. and made his own Howling. I, yeah. I, I, I now understand why he hated the book. Um, this stars uh, Romy Walthall, Walthall as Marie. Who sadly passed away recently. Oh, really? Actually. She was only that. 57 years old. Wow. Yeah, she passed away. Uh, Michael T. Weiss as Richard. Anthony Hamilton as Tom. Suzanne Severide as Janice. Uh, Lamia Derval as Eleanor. Norman Anstey as Sheriff. Kate Edwards as Mrs. Ormstead. Dennis Fulbig as Dr. Coombs. A uh, successful author moves to a small town after suffering a mental breakdown and is tormented by demons and werewolves. And I'll tell you, this movie, I was 35 minutes in, and I couldn't tell you if I'd seen a werewolf or not. I mean, if they had a werewolf before then, I must have like looked away to grab a drink or something and missed it. because I'm Yeah, I don't think going, there really was one until like near the end. There was things like with her like thinking she saw something. Or right. hearing yeah. things like that, but there was nothing like explicitly shown, and it just dragged on and on. I mean, you can imagine how boring it is to watch this yeah. author go out into the woods in a cabin and just uh, deal with rural town folk for forty minutes, just talk, and it's just all dialogue. Yeah, and and this is first of all, speaking of dialogue, this is horrible dialogue, horrible, horrible decision making by people in this movie, and. What Tim told me is I kept saying, it annoyed me five minutes ago. I'm like, why is it every voice so deep in it and not matching really the tone of what's going on? It's because they literally dubbed the entire, the entire movie. They filmed movie. it without sound because they had no budget. Now, I will say, I saw where they did spend the budget towards the end. Yes. Yeah. As there were a lot of actually pretty good practical effects. That's what I was going to bring up earlier that I just remembered that yeah. about, about some effects because, yeah, we'll have to get to that. But, yeah, you're right. The whole movie's dubbed. 
Uh, you every can... voice, every man in it sounds like, well, hi, yeah. how are you? <laughs> it's like they were putting on their podcast voice. I should have never had that second cup of coffee. This has the be- single best line of any Howling movie. I got to find it, Brian, where he says, uh, so, so she's, she's, she's hooking up with this like really kind of sleazy, uh, Fabio type guy at the cabin and that's her husband. Oh, I didn't realize it was her husband because he was. Yeah, like, that's actually her husband. The, the, I thought it was the blonde guy in the beginning. But I that's did too because she I was guess. like kissing that guy, the blonde guy. I know, but apparently he's just a friend. Uh, yeah, this, this this movie gives very weird context. I thought she was again, like was... cheating on the blonde guy with the sweater guy. No, he's actually your husband. Oh my but then, God. you know, then he, like in typical Howling fashion, he goes and cheats with the. Uh, the, the the weird woman, woman that like yeah. seems way too dressed for that town, like she seems way too well dressed. Like everyone else is in like typical like old folk town gear, and she's in like like dining out wear. But there, there's like this scene in that the, he comes in like he killed a rabbit, and he comes in the cabin. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and he goes, it. <laughs> and it's something. I'm paraphrasing because I can't find the exact quote. I texted it to the group, but it was something like, uh, "Boil the water, honey." Daddy Dunn brung home the bacon. It's yeah, I mean, so, it was so... I, I was like, my jaw was dropped. Like, did he actually just say that? Like, I, I don't... Yeah. And it was in a weird... Like, it didn't match his face? No, because it's in that deep, overdubbed <laughs> voice. Like, I'm wondering if they played a trick. Like, that was never the line. And some, they like they, on that day, it. he just decided to ad-lib it. I don't know. It was, it was so bizarre. And I just... I couldn't... But I will say, all that said and done, the only redeeming thing about this movie is the last 20 minutes are kind of cool. Yeah. For some reason, they changed, They saved all their budget for the special effects at the end. Now, the effect doesn't make any sense. So what happens is dude turns into a werewolf, but I guess because they didn't have like the budget for like an actual werewolf transformation, what they have him do instead is he dissolves into a pool of goo and yeah. like down to his skeleton. And then the skeleton turns back into a werewolf. Now that seems like extra though. Why didn't they just? Wouldn't it been cheaper just to make him a werewolf? You would think, but I will have to say the practical effects in this sequence are kind of cool. They're actually kind it of was. Good. Oh no, it was very it well was very done. Cool. Like I said, that, that's where every bit of money went for this. Like it's almost they filmed that first and said, oh crap, we're out of money. All right, yeah. What do we do here? Yeah, we'll dub it later. Just everyone talks silently for the entire movie, and that probably explains why everyone looks so awkward because. It's like they know that there's no going to be no sound and they're going to have to dub. So they probably had to like open their mouths wider to make sure they knew what they were saying. <laughs> I just, I like there was one scene the like when she, or like that end with that one, when they were trying to solve it. She's like, no, I must go here and then you must go there and then he must go there. Was, I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't stop saying must. I, we get it. OK. You know, well, like, and there was also the whole like so the townspeople are like trying to cover up the secret that they're all werewolves. And, yeah, like you couldn't like that was and it was like, that was so the worst cover up obvious. I ever saw in my life. Yeah, it was so obvious, and I'm like, oh, oh, no, you don't need to go in there. It's falling down, and it's a safety hazard. Like, oh, you, yeah. you really don't need to. Like, everybody in this movie is like over, like overly obvious about their cover ups and their secrets. Yeah, and it's just so annoying. Oh, it, yeah, it was, it was painful to watch. Yeah, and what and what was the, the big reveal at the end when she kept saying a word that like when they 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 almost like played it back in their head it became like the werewolves are here. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh come on, all right, stop, <laughs> just stop. Don't twist that in there. That's not what she said ever. You just didn't hear it right or something. Oh, I, I, it was just a weird. It's thing. frustrating. It, it's a very yeah, frustrating. and and then like she is like this woman is uh, another two two things I'm going to point out. And when I say how badly things were done, like the decision. Okay, this woman now has had, I think, two close calls with what she feels like someone's following her and she's scared to death. Yeah, remember, Yet, she's a successful so, author. People know who she right. is. Right. Like, 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 Stephen I King think they like kind of like Stephen yeah. King level. Yeah. So she walks, so someone walks up to her she's never seen before and goes, Hi, uh, are you so and so? I heard you in town, so I came all the way over to see you. I'm one of your big fans. And she's like, Oh, well, come on in for some coffee stranger i don't know that might have been the person following me for three days i don't know yeah and then then she's at one point she, in the beginning she's so upset that her dog is gone she finds yes. what thinks looks to be her dead dog comes back all like a little shocked for about 10 seconds and forgets it and is like on to her like i'm gonna enjoy my little quaint town vacation in a cabin speaking of i hate I'd be, that. if that happened to my dog are you kidding you, <sighs> first of all i'd be i'd be on the first back 
train back out of there. I'd be like hunting everybody. I'd be all John Wick on that town. Yeah. Well, I mean, come on. I, well, I also hated the scene where she was uh, reporting the dog missing to the sheriff. And he has like the worst southern accent. And he's oh, like, God, he's yeah. like, ma'am, when a dog runs off around here. And it sounds like somebody obviously that's not from the south trying to do a southern yeah. accent. It was so cringy. I, that really bothers me because I am from the south and I have a southern yeah. accent. So I know I can spot a fake one when I see it. Yeah. And that was just oh. And even worse, why is he the only one with that accent? <laughs> exactly. He's the only one with that accent. The the doctor's got a British accent. <laughs> the kind of like the the priest has like some other kind of hybrid of something, I don't know, like some old English <laughs> kind of word. I'm like, where are these people coming from? I mean, granted, okay, yes, you you find out, spoiler alert, boom, they're all werewolves. So they probably came from everywhere around, but come on, I mean, just it's ridiculous. Yeah, it, it's it's the, the movie's just full of like like, this this movie is like this. It will be hard pressed to out of these next sequels five through eight to to to, to dethrone this from like, eight. Like they have to go <laughs> up, right? From, like don't they have to go up from here? They, they have, have to. to. There's they no way to there's a movie one. worse than this in this series. There can't be. No, there's no way. But I mean, and look, this is a movie with where we literally had a PG thirteen family film thrown in and a werewolf orgy, and then this one still is taking the cake as the worst well, film. You know, I think it was because I was so bored. I got started getting overly critical. Like at that point, I'm yeah. so bored. I'm just looking for things to hate because at this yeah. point, I don't have anything better to do because I'm certainly not interested in the movie. It's yeah, no, I. You know, at least yeah, the if other you look ones at it, I was like entertained. The pl- right, and if you look at the plot, like on paper, the synopsis you read actually sounds like, oh, that'll be kind of a cool movie. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, kind of similar to the to, to the first Famous one where you know she goes to a retreat. But in this one, she just goes to a cavern. Okay, I get it. I see the similarities. I see what Joe Dante did. He just made it a little different. But then you see this, and I'm like, what on earth? And then the worst thing is, like, half of them are actually werewolf people. Then half of them are the werewolf, like, the dog form. And I don't know what the doctor turned into. It's like some kind of hybrid out of, like, like you know, one of those little finger puppets you used to play with as a kid, remember? <laughs> yeah. Those little rubber fingery yeah. things? Like, you turned the into that. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? What is this movie? I really well, I, like this. Should have been this. Should have been a watch along. I will have I'm to say you. though, I, I literally laughed out loud at the very end because, like, so they set. I, we're going to spoil the hell out of this because you don't want to watch this. If yeah, trust watch, me. We're saving you twenty minutes. We're saving you one and a half hours or four and a half hours, but depending on how you view she, time. She sets the werewolf headquarters on fire, and all the werewolves are burning to death. And then it's like she, she like sees something, and then it does like one of those just freeze frames. Yeah. Um, oh God. That, yeah. Like that. They just ended the movie with like a freeze frame of her, like she saw something terrifying, and then that's the end of the movie. It was. Yeah. I, I start. I literally laughed out loud when I saw the ending. Yeah. I was like, the what one sequence this? that was good in this film, they managed to ruin it with that stupid <laughs> ending. Like, I. Uh, oh my God. It's like they. It's... They really. This is. A, this is a uh, master class in how to take a good plot and make it into just a horrible abysmal boring film it's yeah yeah it's uh and, you know two directors i could maybe that's the thing man maybe, i i, I got well, one guy wasn't even credited the guy think clive turner didn't credit himself oh and good for him good for him unless unless you like unless you directed the last 20 minutes and the other guy did the rest of the movie i would i would take credit for the last 20 minutes it was yeah. pretty cool but i would have changed uh, my name my address my <laughs> phone number i wouldn't even want any kind of remembrance that i did this movie <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so that is the first four Howling movies. Uh, yeah. They they get progressively worse, I think it's safe yeah. to say. And uh, Honestly, this early into the series, Tim, I don't think we've ever had more of a definitive ranking than Howling. The first one at one and this one at eight. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> I really don't. I, where the rest of them fall, I, I can't say yet, but I think that's yeah. a lock right now. Unless something I seriously think changes. Yeah, that is like as lock as you can go right now. <laughs> unless like five through eight just comes up with like some kind of like... I don't even know if they just like literally have a camera on a piece of turd for <laughs> an hour and a half. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty uh, pretty impressive. Um, yeah, but uh, we will be back here next week with our second yeah. half of our howling, which we will do howling five through eight. Which they're not called that. They're they're called no, different no, they're things. not howling five. Remember. They're not even like I think they dropped the numbers after this, right? I think there's no more numbers after this one. Yes, yeah. so I, I don't even remember what the names are. Um, I don't know. One's the rebirth. One's like new moon else. or full moon. I don't know. At least the subtitles are getting better. At least I mean, yeah, between I, there's no bloodlines that I don't think. So I think we're yeah, there. there's no bloodlines. They don't go howling in space, as far as I know. <laughs> Although that would have been probably the only thing that would have made this one worse than this one. 
Um, but, uh, so I'm looking forward to these next four because I, well, I should say I'm looking forward to them. But yeah. I'm looking be careful in choice of your words there, Tim. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm anticipating how they could be any worse than the fourth one. Uh, I guess yeah. I should say. Yeah. But uh, we'll see you back here next week. Hopefully we should be back on schedule now. No more uh, crazy interruptions. So yes. we appreciate, again, your patience as we worked through this move and the new computers and all the uh, scheduling yeah. conflicts. But uh, we are back on track and moving right along through this summer slaycation. Yes. All right, guys. So enjoy. And if that how, that that howl you hear right now is just me and Tim's agony that we had to watch this movie. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, by the way, most of these, I think all of them except the first one, maybe are on Tubi. So they are. Thank God. And boy, did that at least save something. Yeah. What I think about a savior. Tim yeah. and I had this programmed like the way, and because of the delay, they all landed on Tubi. We were going to originally have to rent and pay money for some of these. Can you imagine paying for a Howling Four? <laughs> I think it would have been the first time ever I would have contacted the streaming service and said, I'd, I'd like a refund, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I did not get what I paid for. I paid for a movie and I got I got a turd. Sir, it says please. here you've already watched the film. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. No, I, I, I suffered through the film. Uh, I, at least give me a credit to watch something else To as cleanse well. my eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I need, I need a... I need a, a some kind of a refund. Oh, I don't know. I, I, one thing I didn't do yet and I need to is I need to go look at other reviews of this. I want to see what other people say. Oh, yeah. I haven't even done that yet. I need to as well. So um, I wanted to just cleanse myself from this. All right, guys. We'll see you back here next week. Who knows what's in store. But, uh, yeah, stay out of the woods and uh, and stay away from these sequels. Yes. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> <laughs>